Welcome to this training module, tailored to introduce you to the step-by-step -step procedure and guidelines for installing cable joints. Throughout this session, we'll focus on the connection of cables boasting insulation crafted from cross-linked polyethylene, specifically utilizing the JUPTH joint. To kickstart the process, select the cable cross-section relevant to your desired cable joint installation. As a pivotal preliminary step, Installers should thoroughly acquaint themselves with the provided installation manual, ensuring all essential tools are on hand and in optimal working condition. Let's scope out the workspace. To your left, you'll find components of the joint kit set on a workbench, while your essential tools await on a separate workbench to your right. Now onto the fun part. Position the cables ensuring a consistent overlap of 360 millimeters. Carefully strip the left cable revealing a length of 195 millimeters. To commence, position the QC2 tool stop onto the cable. Securely fasten the tool stop onto the cable by tightening its... Next up, mount the US017000 tool at the cable's end. This is your go-to gadget for stripping away the outer sheath. Gently turn the thumb knob, allowing the jaws to clasp firmly around the cable's diameter, ensuring the tool remains securely affixed. Before you begin sheathing, ensure the tool's blade is elevated roughly 1 32nd of an inch or close to a millimeter just above the cable sheath's edge. For precise blade positioning, tweak the pitch and depth using the adjustment screws. Kickstart the sheathing process by steering the tool up to the QC2 tool stop's marker. To activate the tool, grip its handle and gently rotate. Complete another full rotation to sever the sheath cleanly. Shift the severed sheath section to the right to disengage it from the cable. After a successful cut, release the tool from the cable by loosening its screw. Place the tool out of the way for now. Also, disengage the QC2 by releasing its fixing screw and then set it aside. Moving to the right cable, you'll employ a similar sheathing technique. However, keep in mind the asymmetrical cable preparation. You'll need to strip a longer segment of about 550 millimeters as indicated in the guidelines. From the left cable, delicately unwind and remove the initial water blocking layer, matching the length of the stripped sheath. Bend the shield wires of the left cable backwards, laying them flat around its outer sheath. To ensure the left cable's wire edges remain in place, utilize the insulating tape included in the kit. Remove the secondary water blocking layer from the left cable by unwinding it to the length of the sheath cut. Proceeding to the right cable, it's essential to trim its end so there's a consistent 195mm length from the edge to the stripped sheath section. For a clean cut, use the MRK scissors from your tool set, positioning them at the desired length. Activate the MRK scissors by squeezing the trigger several times to make the cut on the cable. Set the MRK scissors aside. It's time to strip off the semiconductive layer from the left cable. From the edge of the outer sheath, measure and mark a length of 40 mm. Position the WS76 tool at this starting point. Secure the WS76 tool onto the cable by tightening its screw. Adjusting the blade is crucial at this stage. The objective is to ensure the blade delicately removes the semiconductive layer without compromising the cable's insulation beneath. Give the adjustment screw a single press to achieve the desired blade depth. On the WS76 tool, you'll notice a switch. Flip it from the stop position, setting it to the forward motion at its first speed. 
With a firm grip on the tool handle, initiate a rotation. This action should begin the removal of the semiconductive layer from the cable insulation. Once you've achieved a complete rotation, shift the tool's motion back to the stop position and give it another full turn. Good job! Now loosen the screw that fixes the WS76 tool onto the cable and place the tool back on the workbench. Inspect the cable. If you observe any remnants of the semiconductive layer clinging to the insulation, care. Now let's move on to the heat shrinkable tubes. With the cables still separate, slide the conductive heat shrinkable GCTH tube onto the left cable. Now slide the three layer GTTH heat shrinkable tube onto the left cable, ensuring it sits comfortably. Next, position the external GPTHA heat shrinkable to strip off the insulation from the left cable. Begin by fitting the QC2 tool stop at the desired depth in relation to the connector's length. Now, align the US017000 tool designated for insulation removal onto the cable. Affix the tool securely onto the cable to ensure precision during the Fine-tune the blade's height on the tool so that it sits roughly one millimeter above. Start the insulation removal by rotating. Upon making contact with the stop, proceed with an additional full turn to ensure complete detachment of the insulation section. With that done, release the tool's fixation screw and place the US017000 tool back on the workbench. Now slide off the severed insulation segment by moving it to the right, revealing the prepared cable core. Carefully release the fixation screw of the QC2 tool, then place the tool back on the workbench. Ensuring the purity of the cable insulation surface at this juncture is critical. Retrieve an alcohol wipe from the provided kit. Gently clean the cable insulation surface using a single motion. To achieve optimal results on site, employ a slight twist around the cable's axis as you wipe, moving from the cable's edge towards the sheath's cut. Now focus on assembling the cable core connector. Using the provided widget, select the appropriate diameter of the centering rings that match the diameter of the cable. Ensuring the correct diameter is crucial for a reliable connection. Prepare the connector for installation. Take the centering rings and insert them into the holes on both sides of the connector. With the connector ready, position it onto the exposed cable core. Align the second cable so that it properly mates with the connector. Excellent progress so far. To continue, ensure a stable grip during the upcoming bolt tightening phase. Locate the red grip tool on your workbench and fit it onto the cable core connector. Great! Now tighten the bolts until their heads break off, following the specific sequence provided in the installation guide. Nice! Place both the socket wrench and grip tool back onto the workbench. Position the heat shrinkable semiconductor tube, GCTH, so that it fully co Begin the tube shrinkage process from the center, working your way towards the edges. It's crucial on site to heat the tube uniformly, ensuring no specific area gets overheated. Always maintain an even distribution of heat across the tube's outer radius. To ensure proper stress relief in the electrical field, grab the RS7000 25 Stress Control Mastic Tape from your workbench. Center and wrap one layer over the designated areas, aligning it with the edge of the semiconductor layer or semiconductor tube. Adjust the three-layer heat shrinkable tube to its intended position over the connection point, ensuring equal distances from the...
Now with your gas burner, shrink the three-layer tube evenly. Retrieve the Ceiling Mastic ES315. Apply it generously, filling in the gaps between the three-layer tube ends and the cable sheath cuts. Wrap this mastic in multiple layers to ensure a solid seal. Let's connect the cable screens. Start by bending the right cable screen wires back towards the connection point, grouping them into a single bundle, ready for the connector. Use your MRK cable scissors to trim any excessive length from the right screen wires. Similarly, bend the left cable screen wires towards the connection point. Attach the MFL V1050 connector to both bundles, ensuring a solid connection. Tighten the bolts on the MFL V1050 connector using a wrench. Continue tightening until the bolt heads break free. The RCU mesh copper screen, available in the joint kit, over the wire screen of the cable. Ensure each turn overlaps its neighbor by about 50% for a cohesive wrap. Adjust the external heat shrinkable tube, centering it over the cable joint connection. Carefully shrink this tube using your gas burner, ensuring an even heat distribution. Congratulations! The installation of the cable joint tailored for cables with cross-linked polyethylene insulation is now complete. Your dedication and patience throughout this training have been outstanding. Every cable connection you make is a testament to your skill and precision. Remember, as you head into the field, always prioritize safety and meticulousness. Thank you for engaging with this training and we wish you all the best and safest endeavors in your future tasks. Stay safe and keep connecting.